I'm Vin. I'm sorry. And this is Krishna. The cowherd. For the epic. It, the, the name of the band is Demonic Resurrection. Okay. And yes, it's for the epic underground. Who the leader is, Drew Gary. Shout out to Drew. Shout out to the homie. Uh, this is about the big homie Krishna. I'm, I'm uh, doing a little bit of a studying in, uh, what do you call it, Hinduism. And so uh, I've got a friend who's a bhakti. Piques your interest, I'm sure. A bhakti yoga practitioner. Shout out to the homie. Shoot, I moved the baby and forgot to get our drinks. Hmm, looks like we'll have to wait till the next review. Uh, you can get to do it now. I'll do the introductions for everybody. It's up to you. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, Krishna the Cowherd, and this is the Epic Underground. What is the Epic Underground, you say? Very, very interesting question, dear listener. The Epic Underground is a group of people who come together. One dollar the gate gets you in a Patreon, and then you go out there, and you pull your points together, and that determines what songs that we do. Um, and that's one of the reasons why on this channel you will hear and see bands and songs that you've never heard before. And that's because of that, that system. And people could say whatever they want about it, but uh, I really like it because it gives us the opportunity to hear bands that we wouldn't otherwise have heard. Okay, now if you're a filthy capitalist like Sori and you don't want to work with a group of people and you want it right now, 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You do that three times, you get knocked down in the $75 rate. You could accomplish this on Patreon. There's a tier there, or you can accomplish that on PayPal, Merch at gmail.com. By the way, if you're a patron, you're going to want to pay very close attention to the update videos that are coming in a day or two because they are going to be the bomb. Maybe by the time you've seen this, the update video has already been cut. Okay. Having said that, it is now time, ladies and gentlemen, to hear the song Krishna the Cowherd by Demonic uh, Resurrection. Resurrection. Let's go. Hey, hey. Back the gun that has been born. 
I am a fan. Take <laughs> maybe it's a different song. Yeah, it kind of looked, we, it looked the like lyrics, it. The lyrics were finished. Yeah, I'm like, wait, what's happening? Wait, what? Oh, that was such a good song. Uh, I'm a fan of this song. So I, I've got a friend who's uh, who's he's into bhakti. He's he's into bhakti yoga, which is um, completely centered on Krishna. Right. And so there's lots of gods or emanations of gods in Hinduism, and there are different denominations, basically, kind of in Hinduism. Would he listen to this? The one, I'll probably send it to him. But the the one, the one that he, so our friend, he, in in our friend's worldview, Krishna is the um, highest expression of God. Mm -hmm. He's he's like the original uh, Godhead or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what is what is what do they say? Krishna is the highest expression of godhood, or something like that, um, or Godhead, or whatever. Krishna is the okay. highest. He's the highest whatever of God, the supreme personality of Godhead. Okay, that, that's that's the term. Um, not every. Sometimes I wish I just knew what was in your head on something like that, because you'd be like, "What?" Not. You'd be like Vin, the supreme personality. The per supreme okay. personality of Godhead. They're there uh, now, Vinny. So it, it, yeah, so so my buddy, uh, and then I listen to this guy a lot. Um, although I haven't been able to hear him in a while. I'm a Rendra Das. Mm -hmm. So they, they these things are called Leela, L I L A. It, it means pastimes. It's basically the pastimes of Krishna. And like one of the different things, personalities or his pastimes. Is that what you just said? Well, yes, and like it's okay. So his his brother Balarama, right? Yeah. His brother is Balarama, and Balarama is uh is is okay. If you name somebody that was in this, oh, Balarama is here. Yeah, Balarama. Balarama is the seventh, and then Krishna is the eighth. Because remember, there's a prophecy. There's gonna be eight sons, and the the kid's gonna destroy you. And so it's kind of like a Herod type thing when he went out to kill all these people, and then voice basically said, "You fool! Like your your killer is not in this womb," because it got switched. And then, he, you know, Krishna was born via Mother Yashoda, right? And then, you know, they live That's in... That's interesting. Yeah, Yashoda, and she lives in... They all live in Vrindavan. Yep, yep. Right? So, that's when that dude said, Me and my girl, we been mobbing. Back in the day, I been shot and <laughs> Run up in your house like bin lot, and boy, I send you straight to Vrindavan. <laughs> Y'all know about that. Uh, yeah, okay, so Krishna, Krishna's mother, uh, Mother Yashoda, she gives birth to him. Balarama is like a... So according to Amarendra Das, the um, Vrindavan is actually the body of Balaram. So they they're living on uh, Vrindavan, which is basically heaven or Jana or whatever. They're living on him. Is his body like? But remember, Balaram, Krishna, Vish, these are all like personalities of Godhead. Krishna is the original personality of Godhead or the supreme personality of Godhead. Yeah. Then he has all these different emanations. So technically, technically, if, like you really bring it down, like Balaram is still basically shares the same essence as Krishna. Mm -hmm. But it's just uh, Krishna wants to have all these different experiences. So he'll come out with these different emanations mm -hmm. that are really just him experiencing himself. If that makes any sense. So, like for example, Lord Caitanya. I have such a hard time to like completely grasp around it. So Radharani, Radharani is Krishna's main squeeze. That's mm -hmm. his girl. And but in reality, Radharani again is just, just an emanation an of, of Krishna, yeah. and it's basically him being able to like have another person that experiences like devotion to himself, right? And so. Um, it's a very fascinating... So Lord Caitanya is really the combination of Radharani and Krishna together at the same time. So he's the guy that came up with the, the uh, you know, the quote, Krishna, Krishna, you know, the, Rama, the, Rama. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, Hare yeah. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. I, I forgot. But anyway, he's the one that came up with that chant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the one that came up with that chant. So, like, it, it's a very, it's a very intricate... Uh, theology. So Balarama and, and the 
and they're all known for something. Krishna is basically known for his mischievousness, and he's he's in love with cows. He just calls himself a cowherd boy. So when he goes to Vrindavan, he plays with his friends. He's they're just playing with cows, basically, right? Okay. And then Brahma is like one of the highest sort of you know emanations of God, and he's basically represented as a bull, right? So like for whatever reason, I still don't understand why the cow is so important to Krishna, but 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 anyway, Krishna. You know, loves cows, and so that's why cows are so sacred. Yada 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 yada. Um, so anyway, there's this bad guy, and, and that's one of the things. It's like Krishna. Lucky for the cows over there. Well, we showed we showed the kids. Don't put it. Don't hide it. I just want to. Know we showed them. the kids um, like a, a cartoon. Yeah, a little of Krishna, cartoon. And, and, yeah. and like a lot of the times, he's like killing some demon. So, but the demons are basically made by him so that he could kill them. Like, it's very very interesting theology, but. I mean, it's not it's not far off from there's our some, thoughts. Well, there's overlaps with the Trinity, yeah. right? Like, so for example, like a lot of Christians don't know this, but you know, Nicene Christianity says that the God the Father eternally generated God the Son. Mm-hmm. So there is a sense in which you could say, okay, that that kind of works, right? Because Krishna generates all these other mm-hmm. kind of uh, avatars of the divine being, mm-hmm. um, but it's it's not like exactly like the trinity the trinity is that you you have three co-equal co-eternal persons that are aware of their distinction to the other and jesus is not really god the father like jesus is an actual separate person although they share the same nature or ontology but you know now we're getting like super super technical but it's yeah. it's 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 a very very interesting thing so anyway Kas, Ka, uh, kamsa is this tyrannical, horrible pharaoh type? Can I just ask you a question before yeah. we move forward? So you remember how Krishna steals the bunny, the bunny, the, the butter, the butter when he's like little, right? So, you know, Adi said something that was basically like, if he takes it, then it's not wrong because he's the creator or something like that. Like, well, yeah, if how he... can you steal from yourself? I don't remember exactly what he said. Yes, right. So, so Krishna. <clears throat> He wanted to experience what it's like to be a child, and so he he, he enters into the womb of Mother Yashoda, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And and then so Yashoda <laughs> then becomes his 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 mother, and but Yashoda is just another version of himself, she, still she, another y- version y- of herself. Yeah, kind of. She orders him around. She tells him what to do. He listens to her. Blah blah blah. Well, one of the more famous stories is that he eats dirt. He starts to eat this dirt. So. Dirt. Yashoda, dirt, literally, he's eating dirt. Yashoda goes up to him and says, what the hell are you doing? You can't, you, you know, you can't eat dirt. And he's got this all over his mouth. Oh. And he goes, I wasn't eating any dirt. He lied. So that is what I was talking to my Hindu friend about. I said, "You're." he lied. He can't be the supreme personality of Godhead if he's lying. <laughs> and he was like, well, if, if, you know, he's a creator, I don't have a problem with the stealing aspect of it. If he's a creator, he made anything, then the dirt is his, right? That's fine, but he lied. <laughs> like that's that because that because my friend is saying that there's continuity between our God and and, and his mm-hmm. God. It's just an, another of the million or whatever in you know emanations of, of Krishna. So Jesus, for example, would be Krishna in the mood of a suffering servant, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, or they'll take an Old Testament God and be like, "Oh, that's that's God in the mood of a warrior judge or whatever." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So all these different personalities of God, Krishna then embodies a person who has that specific type of personality. So Balaram is a warrior, and he's a you know he's a you know he's a he soldier. Uh, yeah, Balarama. Balarama is his yep. brother, right? <clears throat> it says right there. It's Krishna's brother. To go cool home to Krishna and uh, Balarama. Right, um, and I think Gokul is a is another way to talk about Vrindavan because that's the home of Krishna and uh, Balarama. But so like they have these personalities. So Balarama is a servant, and he's a warrior, right? Okay. So so Balarama is Krishna in the mood of a servant warrior. Krishna as a baby in Vrindavan is is Krishna in the mood of a child, a mischievous child, etc. etc. Et yeah. And this like goes on and on and on and on. So our friend was saying, look, Jesus is simply an emanation of Krishna in the mood of a suffering servant. Right? Oh. And what I'm saying wow. is, uh, and my 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 thing is, the God of the Bible cannot lie. Right. There's things that the God of the Bible cannot do. Right. Um. But if Krishna, if Krishna lies, 
Yeah. Then he is ontologically different mm -hmm. than the God of the Bible. Now, whether or not it's okay for a God to lie is a separate discussion. Mm hmm I'm not, I, I wasn't impugning Krishna's character. I like Krishna. I mean, I call Orion Krishna because he's, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's very, you know. <laughs> Mischievous. I mean, you're Radha Radhi in my phone. Right. So, like, I, I, I love the ideas and all the rest of it. But my point was simply, there's a clear ontological distinction between Krishna and the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible well, cannot yeah. lie. Well, there's that, obviously. Right? Yeah. But also, I think that that Krishna has to express himself through a bunch of different persons to express who he fully is, but they come out in all these different persons where the God of the Bible, all of that is contained within himself. Yes. Although it's not so much expression as it is experience. So Krishna does all these things because he wants to know, he wants to experience what it's like. So because he's a divine being, obviously mm -hmm. he's never had a mother. So he incarnates inside of Mother Yashoda just so that he can have the experience of being mothered. Hmm. Right? And then That's so saddish to me. And and then he'll have Radharani. And Radharani is there so that he can have the experience of the, the love type of, you know, that a men and women have. And so Radharani is his main squeeze. And Radharani was, you know, the most beautiful, blah blah blah, and she has got the most devotion possible to Krishna. But it's really interesting because when you go to Vrindavan with Krishna and his friends, like they order him around and tell him what to do. And he he functions like a regular kid. It's kind of like in Vrindavan, you know, like you're a rock star everywhere else and then you go home and, and people tell you to take out the trash and people like appreciate that. They're like, okay, finally a place where everybody treats me. So that's what it's like in Vrindavan. <laughs> they make fun of him. They laugh at him. They're like, you're not God. Get out of here. Blah, blah, blah. Take out the trash. And he loves that. But then he goes to another country. Oh, he, he goes somewhere else outside of Vrindavan, and then you know, and Vrindavan's a real place. Like you can go to it in in India. Oh, really? Yeah, there's we a physical Vrindavan, Vrindavan, there's trees and all that stuff. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's a pretty cool place. And then you know, there's a spiritual Vrindavan where the stuff is happening right now. So this is one of the Lila or the well, pastimes. What of, you were just saying, there, there's a spot in the Bible where it basically says like a prophet is not like welcome in his own hometown. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. But, it's but he likes it. But it, he wants but, that but, like normal experience. Yeah, it's I guess. weird because when he left, when he was gonna leave Vrindavan, like there was this giant thing. It showed up. Everybody went crazy. They were crying. People were dying. And then yeah, I think uh, Yashoda was yelling at her husband like, "How are you still alive?" And Krishna has left us. You know, like what's yeah, wrong yeah. with you? And yada yada yada. And then the guy basically said, "Well." He said, uh, if I if I was to die for grief for Krishna, I would be taking the easy way out. So the way that I serve Krishna is by staying alive to feel the pain of separation from Krishna, blah, blah, blah. Oh like, That's the nice. way that they treat Krishna and Vrindavan is insane. It's like, on the one hand, he's like a regular guy, but on the other hand, he's like everybody's is favorite. Is it not plugged in? Everybody's favorite son or whatever hmm. it is. It's, it's very, very that fascinating That is very stuff. interesting. <clears throat> so many things that i'm thinking about that yeah and, and so in this this is like one of like literally like 70 80 stories of krishna so in, defeating a demon can you can you just say this story like obviously there's so many names in this and the names of places like okay so on the eve of the dawn of kali yuga so we're in we're in kali yuga right now okay so kali yuga basically means the time of darkness or i think it's actually the technical term is ignorance Okay. So you're in the, the Kali means like uh, just like the time period that you're in. As a matter of fact, we reviewed a song and the song was called Kali Kali or something like that. So on the eve of Kali Yuga, so right. In, on Earth? So Kali Yuga, it's, it's an age. You know how we'll say like. Or is it in Krishna's universe and we just happen to be sitting in it? Well, yeah, everything is Krishna's universe, right? So like, like so for no, example. No, is it an age in, in his universe or is it an age in er, on Earth? Well, for a Hindu, there'd be no difference, right? Krishna's universe and our universe are all the same. It's all the same thing. No, because Earth is like here. The universe is much bigger. So is this age going on all over the place? We're just sitting in it right now? Or is this for an age that was back then when this thing happened? Do you understand my question? Nope. We're, we're in the middle of Kali Yuga right now. What makes so us Kali, in the middle of it? Because Kali Yuga is marked by an age of ignorance. People eat cows. You know, okay. that type of thing. Okay. Like this is stuff that would Do be Do they believe that there's other planets of. with other people? 
oh, yeah. other things. Oh, yeah. So are they all in the age of ignorance or just us on yeah, planet Earth? All of, right now, we're all in the age of Kali Yuga. All the other planets, too. Right. Okay. Now, you you can you can be a knowledgeable person in the age of Kali Yuga. It's, it's very similar, well, yeah, but just similar to like Islam. In Islam, they call it Jahiliya. So Jahiliya was a time of... Uh, ignorance before Muhammad got his uh, his revelation. Okay. So the period prior to, prior to revelation was called Jahiliya, which literally means the period of ignorance. Yep. And and that's why the main bad guy was called Abu Jahil, because the father Abu of ignorance Jahil. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't really his name. His name was Umar, but uh, they he he got nicknamed uh, Abu Jahil. So Kali Yuga. The father of the age of ignorance. Is that what you just said? No. Uh, he. he no, Abu Jahil means a father of ignorance. Okay. So, so of everybody in Jahiliya, this guy was the most ignorant of all the ignorant people. So he gets called Abu Jahil. Um, so Kali Yuga is is the age that we're in, and it's marked by deception and and Maya and and eating of meat, particularly the cow, which is you know completely blasphemous. So, but anytime there's an age like that, a, a distressing age, then Krishna has to come down and, and incarnate. So, on the eve of the dawn of Kali, you get distressed. Oh! Yeah, exactly. Bhuma Devi stood before Brahma in the form of a disconsolate cow. I seek refuge in you, my lord. Rid me of my burden because she's... She's to have that child. She's, yes, but she's also coming to complain about this guy, uh, Kasma, because he's so terrible. You okay. see? So, Brahma then turns to Vishnu for guidance. So, in this particular song, it's really interesting. It seems to me that um, Vishnu, because in some denominations, Vishnu is the ultimate expression of Godhead, not Krishna. Okay. So, Krishna, in some, you know, denominations... Vishnu Hinduism, is male? Vishnu, well, Vishnu can be male or female, depending on how, they're, on how okay. he or she is represented. Okay. But, but so, 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 Brahma turns to Vishnu... <clears throat> and Vishnu says, I know of her distress. Shisha and I shall come f come to earth, born as the seventh and eight sons of uh, Vasuveda. I will free her from these chains. So you see here, she, uh, Vishnu speaking, right? Mm -hmm. And Shisha and I will come to earth, born as the seventh and eight sons. Okay? So when, when they manifest on the earth, it's no longer Shisha and Vishnu. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Balaram, mm -hmm. who is the seventh, and then Krishna, who is the eighth. Oh, oh, oh. So we're going to come down and we're going to solve this problem. Kamsa, the tyrant shall fall, a heavenly voice prophesied, etc. So um, <clears throat> the the, the Bhumadevi shows up as a disconsolate cow. She's complaining about how horrible Kamsa is to Brahma. Brahma turns to Vishnu and says, how do we solve this problem? Vishnu says, don't worry. Um, me and uh, Balaram will, will come down to the earth in the seventh and eight sons, right? And then there's a prophecy about Kamsa the tyrant falling. And and then it tells a story. He raised a sword to slay her uh, because it says the, the death will be the by cow? the eighth. It'll be by the eighth son of Devaki. Yeah, but it's uh, kind of sounds like David, right? <clears throat> yeah. It's kind of weird that... So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. She's... So David this whole thing is going on. This cow is about to give birth. And then she said, we're going to come to earth. But if they no, no, come... No, 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 The cow shows up and complains. Yeah. So the cow shows up to the heavenly court and starts complaining about Kamsa. Mm -hmm. So so she's doing it in the form of a cow because Brahma is in the form of a bull. So basically she comes in the form of a cow. When she says, rid me of my burden, what is she saying? Kill Kamsa because he's a tyrant. He's horrible. Oh, I thought she, I thought the cow was pregnant. I thought she came as a pregnant cow. Okay. No, no. So so she shows up as a cow because Brahma is a bull. So she shows mm -hmm. up as a cow to curry favor. Brahma then turns to Vishnu and Vishnu says, "I know how to solve this problem. Me and Balaram are going to show up uh, to this woman named Devaki, and she's going to have eight kids, and mm -hmm. the eighth one is going to do it." Well. So Kamsa hears about this prophecy, so he goes to to Devaki to kill her child oh because gosh. right. He That's raised why his, they're saying it's a girl. Let it live. Right, 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 right. As he raised his sword to slay her, the hand of Vasudeva did stop him. A promise was made to spare her life. To you, we give every child that is born. So he's looking at it like, hey, it's just a girl. Relax, a girl. It's supposed to be a boy because what had mm -hmm. happened was there was a switch that happened, and so really the the eighth child went from Devaki to Yashoda. Oh. 
And so that's how it was, you know, that's how they circumvented his, his attack. So the eighth child was born. The king, uh, he stormed in. Spear this child. It's only a girl. Let me, let, let me keep her, dear brother. Kamsa paid no heed as he snatched up the infant and dashed it to the ground. Right? The spirit of Yoga Maya rose. Oh, foolish one, your destroyer lives elsewhere. Right? So, so right there, Maya is basically, Maya is like the veil of deception, basically. Oh. Right? So like, And called him foolish? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Yoga Maya, like, she came up, yeah, you idiot, like, did you but you're really, all the one that deceived did, did, did me. Did you really think that, did you really think that it would be that simple? Right, like, right, right, Sometimes right. I wonder about bad guys, like, nigga, did you really believe, nigga, that a <laughs> prophecy go like that was going to happen and it was a mistake, nigga? Like, you just yeah. going to roll up in there, like, the gods were up there going, shit, we shouldn't have said anything. Right, right, right. <laughs> dumb as hell, bro. Um... So several auras were sent over time to Gokul, home to Krishna and Balarama. Each of them vanquished, destroyed. The king was left in dismay. And then, of course, there's a challenge to bend the bow. But, you know, Krishna is so, like, supernaturally strong that he broke it. You know, there's that is whole it... thing where he, like, held up the entire, like, I, I think it was Vrindavan. He, he, he held up an entire, like, hill on oh, his yeah, pinky. Oh, yeah, yes. Right. So it's like there's, like, this challenge. And then Krishna, you know, he breaks the bow. Nobody could even bend it. He breaks it. And then that's when ba that's when home homeboy knew that he was screwed, so he bounced. He tried to run. When he saw that Krishna <laughs> Krishna broke the thing, he's like, "Oh shit!" No, he's like, I got I, I got to bounce, nigga. And uh, Krishna killed him. So uh, that's one of the more famous famous Leela or pastimes of uh, uh, Krishna. How do you go? Okay, one more question. Why did Krishna kill him? Because Krishna loves to kill demons. That's like one of his things. He enjoys. Oh, his it. own brother was a demon. He enjoys it. Okay. Remember, remember when he said that? He's like, uh, our, our our Hindu friend. He's like, yeah, man. Like Krishna goes out, he he kills demons and he smiles. He enjoys it. <laughs> remember that? I was like, holy shit, this is some terrifying shit, my nigga. <laughs> like, what do you mean, bro? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, the way he smiled, because you know how like good and peaceful Adi is and everything. Yeah. He's like, yes, you know. So he'll he'll kill them. He enjoys it. And I was like, oh, okay. All right. And then he was, nah, I'm not going to say anything. Shout out to the homie. Shout out to the homie. Okay, because you're interesting. sending this whole thing to him? No, I'm not going to send none of this to him. Oh. Why would I? Yeah. For me, it's always weird because I feel like Krishna's a demon. <laughs> so I'm like, so the demon goes out and slays other demons and he's, he's happy He's about blue. It. He's blue. Yeah, you think Krishna's a demon. I do. I do. I do. Well, he's very mischievous and he's certainly not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible cannot lie. So I was just making an I was making an ontological argument. I wasn't saying it's bad that Krishna lied. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's rather inconsequential. Did you eat dirt? No, I didn't eat dirt. There's dirt all over the place. You know, it's like I, I do we, think we it, have one, ch two children probably. It, it is like very interesting though because you it it kind of folks. Um, so it, it, it's just a very, very interesting thing. Like I always say, like, I love looking at, you know, I love looking at the major religions, you know, Islam, everybody knows. What, what's that verse where David says something like, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the yeah, house it's of in the Lord Psalms. than what? What, yeah. what, what is it again? Yeah. Yeah. It basically, I'd rather spend one day as a doorkeeper, you know, of in the temple of my God than whatever. Yeah. That's what I want to know is what, what's the whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm eighty four ten, for a day in your courts is better than a thousands. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Oh, so you were going with the heaven thing, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't think that it supported that theology, but I just thought it just kind of reminded me of me well, like, it, where you said it's to serve there. It's because to me, if you're a doorkeeper, you're serving, right? You're a doorkeeper. You're, yeah. You're working. Yeah. Yeah. Although you know. Heaven in the New Testament text is is spoken of as God's rest. Yep. For example, in Hebrews four, um, but but yeah, I mean, there's definitely an element where you're serving God, but uh, it, the biblical understanding of what serving God means is much broader. You know, like they're talking about like wiping Krishna's feet, getting him tea, that type oh. of thing, like real, and that's why. Your guru, you 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 basically worship Sri Guru because oh. Guru is the and so you see people kissing his feet, putting oh, flowers on. Okay. So yeah, that, that so when when biblically when you say serve God, 
you know, I'm thinking like Martin Luther, where he tells the shoe cobbler, like, make the best shoe you possibly can, and that counts as your service to God. You know, a musician, make the best solo you can, and that counts as serving well, God. Well, yeah, because Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these, you've done to me. Right. And and I, Paul so, says, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it all to the glory of God. Yeah. So mm -hmm. everything counts as service to God yeah. from a Christian worldview, because you're if what you're doing is Godward, then it counts. Mm. Whereas this is very, very, very specific in bhakti yoga, which is you're, you're actually doing things that are directly related and consequential to Krishna. And then, you know, by extension, Sri Guru and all the rest of it. So mm -hmm. um, that's the ultimate heaven for a bhakti yoga practitioner is, is that. So anyway, shout out, shout out to uh, the, the big homie Krishna and Sri Guru and all the rest of them. Shout out to the homie uh, what are you Ari doing Govinda one? Das. Shout out to Amarendra Das. Uh, I got to give this one a 9.3, man. I really enjoyed it. I liked it, obviously. Loved an excuse to talk about uh, Krishna. <laughs> um, uh. And I was I was impressed because I saw Krishna the cowherd. I was like, oh, this is, this mm -hmm. is, oh, is this what it Where is this like? going to go? Yeah. Uh, and sure enough, it's exactly what I thought it would be. So shout out, shout out to them. Good job. That's a uh, that's a nine for me. That's pretty high. I didn't I didn't think you were gonna go that high with it. So there you are, dear listener. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.